Hi, I'm Kevin Hartley and welcome to Kevin Hartley Photography. In this edition, what I want to do is share with you uh, my experience of photographing wagtails. Earlier this year I did another video on dippers which I filmed up in the Lake District, uh, wrong the Peak District uh, and I'll leave a link to that at the, the end of this video. The aim of this video is to show you how to, or help you how to identify wagtails, where to find wagtails and finally how to photograph them and what I'll do is I'll give you what I consider to me my top three tips in how to photograph wagtails at the end. Here in, here in the UK we have um, three um, different species of, of wagtails. Two of them which are, are a resident and one which is like a spring summer uh, migrant visitor. So the two resident ones are the grey wagtail and the pied wagtail and the um, visitor is the yellow wagtail um, which we see every spring and summer here in the UK and what we'll do later on in the video is I'll look at each of them in turn um, and, and show you how to ad identify them. When we look at the um, three wagtails that we have here in the UK they have a few things that, that are in common. Um, they're all larger than a, than a sparrow in size and the tails constantly bob up and down. It's often thought that why they do this uh, is it to disturb food uh, or is it as a means of communication? I think it's a means of communication. Um, certainly from what I've witnessed, um, it would seem to be more appropriate that it does that. Um, the way that they move, they all move kind of similar. They move in short, jerky style type of walk, as, as you can see in the video. And when it comes to foraging for food and taking food, you'll often see them um, catching flying insects from the ground. Um, so they're walking about in their, their little jerky movements, tail bobbing up and down, and all of a sudden they'll just jump up into the air um, to catch their food. Uh, that's the kind of common things that all three wagtails have in common. Uh, the diet of all three uh, wagtails is very similar, and as much as that they, they will mainly eat um, things like insects, flies, midges, caterpillars. Uh, most of the food is actually taken from the ground, um, but as you've seen from the video, um, they will also take it from shallow water um, and by catching insects in the air. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at each of the wagtails in turn and we'll start off with the, the grey wagtail and how to identify it and also where to find it. Um, all three wagtails are um, larger than a sparrow, um, however the grey wagtail um, is similar in size to the, pi uh, to the, to the pied wagtail. Uh, the yellow wagtail being the, the, the smallest of the three. When we look at the, the grey wagtail, um, you'll see that it's um, black, pale, blue and grey. Uh, upper breast is yellow, uh, which becomes a bit deeper in colour underneath the tail. Um, the difference between the male and the female is, is that the male has a black throat and a bib, whereas the female has a um, white, throat, th white throat and bib. Um, the call is very similar to the pied wagtail, and here it is. The ideal habitat for a grey wagtail is what's exactly in front of you, and this is the position I've set myself up on. This is a fast-flowing, shallow stream um, which runs alongside an old mill. The wagtails are attracted to the the, the weir that you can see in front and I've set myself up just down to the right hand side. Absolutely ideal environment for grey wagtail. Okay next we're going to look at the the yellow wagtail. Um, out of the three wagtails the yellow wagtail is the smallest. It's got a, a shorter tail than the other two. Adult males are, uh, have a very bright yellow underpart and the faces are bright and yellow as well. And the females um, uh, have a duller brown back with a pale throat and a pale stripe above the eye, which is a, a good indicating figure, um, identification mark. Um, when it comes to the yellow wagtail's call, it's kind of like a sweep sound. Sweep, sweep, and it sounds like this. Okay, the yellow wagtail, um, where are we going to find them? Well, as I said previously, the yellow wagtail is a spring, summer migrant visitor to the UK. Um, the most likely place that you're going to find them is actually on farmland. 
uh, and especially so uh, if there's a source of water on that farmland. Um, I'm lucky I've got permission to, from a farmer to, to film on his land and uh, although it's October at the moment it's a beautiful glorious sunny day today we're having a bit of an Indian summer here in the UK. Um, when, when these fields were, were full of crops um, it attracted the, the, the yellow wagtails and uh, I got some what I consider to be really good pictures and I'll show you them here now. One thing to note about yellow wagtails is that if there are cattle uh, on the farmland you'll often find that the yellow wagtails will actually follow the cattle and as the cattle are moving and disturbing the, the insects up off the ground the yellow wagtails are, are there to feed on them. So source of water uh, and also if there's any livestock which the, the, the wagtails will follow. How do you identify the, the pied wagtail? Well the pied wagtail is our most common wagtail. It's larger than a sparrow and it's mainly black, white and, and grey plumage. When you look at the male, the male has mainly black upper parts uh, with a white face and the females are more dark grey, less black on the head and the throat. Um, one slight confusion may be if you come across a juvenile which uh, are generally quite dull and grey and black uh, but they have a, a slight dull yellow tinge to the face and that can be confused with grey wagtails. Um, so the pied wagtail. So where are you likely to find pied wagtails? Um, you mainly find pied wagtails in uh, man-made environments. As I started filming this, the, I just had two pied wagtails fly over the top of me. Hopefully you might be able to hear them in the background of this small commentary that I'm doing. But pied wagtails are attracted to man-made environments. Things like this, this farmyard, it's got a water feature that will attract the, the, the pied wagtails in as well. So anywhere where there's a man-made environment in local parks, local gardens, you'll find them in urban environments, things like um, farmhouses as I said, sewage works, the, those type of man-made structures will attract pied wagtails. Okay, uh, when it comes to camera settings, um, I have two set of settings. I have my generic camera settings that I set on the camera and then I have my exposure settings. So camera settings, I always shoot in RAW and I always shoot in auto white balance and the reason for that is that in my post processing I can adjust it as necessary. I use evaluative metering which measures the, the whole light across the scene. I set the camera to continuous. If I'm photographing a stationary bird I'm looking at um, a single uh, focus point or if it's birds in flight, I'll use um, a group set of focus points. And I always uh, shoot on the highest frames per second. Every camera is different. Um, I'm a Nikon shooter, so it's different from Canon. So you need to understand the settings on your camera. When it comes to exposure settings, um, I always shoot manual. And the reason for that is it gives me complete control over all my exposure settings. Um, when it comes to the aperture, I'll set it between 5.6 to, to 8.8, uh, depending on the light that's available. Uh, wagtails, as we've, as we've seen, are very quick in the movements, so I will set my camera uh, at a minimum of 1 1,000th one of a second, and I will then set it on auto ISO. Now, if I've got the aperture completely right, because I'm on manual and I'm set on auto ISO, the only thing I need to change is my shutter speed and I can do that with one finger and I'll explain a little bit more to that when we look at the, the, the tips. So f5.6 to f8, one one thousandth of a second minimum and auto ISO. Tip number three in how to photograph wagtails is to get down low and I hope you can hear me above the, the sound of the water uh, once again. The idea is to get as low as you possibly can to the ground, trying to conceal yourself as much as you can. It's a very bright day today, lots of shadows around, but the idea of getting down low is what we're after.
Okay, tip number two on how to photograph wagtails is to try and use as high a shutter speed as you possibly can. As you can see from the, the, the videos, uh, wagtails are very quick, fast when they go about their business and you need a relatively high shutter speed to, to catch that action. Um, the secret is really to try and balance the shutter speed against your aperture and your ISO. As I said in my settings, I always shoot the manual, auto ISO, set my aperture and then the only thing I really need to worry about then is my shutter speed. If I've got my aperture spot on, then as I said, the only thing I need to change is the shutter speed. I can do that with one finger. So, tip number two, when you photograph the wagtails, try and use as high shutter speed as you possibly can. Tip number one and how to photograph wagtails is to focus on the eye. Now, that's not, it's a lot easier to say that than it is actually practically to do it. Again, wagtails are all over the place. They never sit still for one second. But like any other wildlife like photograph, it's just, if you've got the eye spot on, then your image should turn out correct. So, tip number one, focus on the eyes. Thanks for watching this edition of Kevin Hartley Photography and how to photograph wagtails. I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, making the, the, the video. Um, all I would ask is that um, if you've liked it, can you hit the like button? Uh, if you'd like to see more like this, then could I ask you to subscribe to my channel, Kevin Hartley Photography. It's completely free, it doesn't cost anything, and it just gives me that incentive to come out into beautiful little places like this in the English countryside. So until the next time, stay safe, take care, and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.